Netflix The Witcher is the biggest disappointment since my... No, no, we're not doing that, but this is such an atrocity that I pirated a copy of Adobe Premiere to make this video. It's probably the ugliest show you're likely to see this year. All the characters look dumpy as hell and the costumes are pure dog shit. And I'm not talking just about Nilfgaard, but I, but I am talking about Nilfgaard. That armor looks like turtle shit and everyone who's seen it instinctively realizes that. What you might not have realized is that in the books, Big Badass, Big Boss, Kira Daifram is a Nilfgaardian officer that gets built up for an entire book or two solely on the basis of his imposing appearance in his elegant armor and winged helmet. Uh, Kahir has the same shit ball sack armor as everyone else, but his helmet has a prominent plume instead of wings. His helmet also has tiny asterisk style wings, but these tiny Gallic wings don't really make him the terrifying silhouette that gave Siri PTSD for so long, long but that's what they decided to go with. It's not just Nilfgaard soldiers, though all the soldiers are wearing a shitty plastic plate armor on top of these weird pajamas. Everyone in this show has shitty clothes. Here, look, look at these lords and ladies dancing before the sovereign authority of this feudal society. Let's see, oh, a plain gray dress, a plain white one. Oh, here's a plain off-white one, and here's a plain brown one. Inspiring. These are sure to turn heads. But they shouldn't feel too bad, because look at what Calanth is wearing. Seriously, this is the queen's dress? It looks like a fucking Snuggie. Hold up, I just got an email. It's okay that these costumes look like shit. It's a realistic European fantasy. You know, when history dyes and textiles were expensive and clothes were handmade, they can't look too fashionable. Shut up, shut up, shut up. These costumes look worse than Halloween costumes. Okay, sure, the email continues. Maybe the aristocracy could do with some better threads. But I actually enjoy how gritty and ugly everything looks. It fits the setting. Shut up. No, you don't. Plenty of movies depict the grotesque and somehow make it beautiful and enthralling and captivating. This is just incompetence. As for the grit you like so much, point it out in this scene, in this sterile fucking street in Blaviken. Alright, completely empty and dead. A gritty street sure as hell wouldn't be paved. In medieval times it would be full of rubbish, empty chamber pots, livestock vendors, puddles and mud that threatened to make the path unnavigable. Logs of green wood laid down for pedestrians. Houses built without code, always encroaching on the public thoroughfare, leaning over and braced against each other. What about the elves, a race so proud that despite their constant and horrific persecution, it's commonly believed that they lack tear ducts? Well, I guess they can wear rags. Because they're so persecuted and some of these are gorillas, right? They can't be, you know, like fashion mob. Oh, wait! Scoia'tael were precisely known for being beautiful and well-dressed. Even among gorillas, their clothing was elaborate and decorative. Okay, what about sorceresses? Literally the people shown in the television show as striving to change their appearance to embody the highest aesthetic ideals. No, they look dumpy as hell. So this woman's 27 in real life. The show made her look 37. Triss is known for stunning chestnut hair and a 22-inch waist. Now, now she isn't. And like all other witches, she's also afraid to show off her fucking arms. But hey, her dumb green dress has gold sequins on it. If you think what Triss is wearing in the first game or that one DLC outfit is too gratuitous, why don't I read you what the witches actually wore in the books? The Witcher nodded. Sabrina's bodice weaved out of black chiffon revealed absolutely everything that could be revealed. And that was quite a bit of that. Carmine's skirt with a silver belt and rose-shaped buckle had a cut at the side with accordance to the latest fashion trend. The trend, however, required the cut to be to the thigh, while Sabrina's reached the hip, a nicely shaped hip. Sabrina, on the other hand, smiled at the Witcher. With one swift move presented everything the black chiffon didn't cover. Geralt swallowed, trying his hardest not to gape too much at the pink nipples, perfectly visible under the transparent cloth. So maybe I'm just an MCP, but my impression was that these women were supposed to look like total bombshells. Not this. They could have gotten professional models to portray them. Would professional models have been as good as acting? Well, that's pretty clear they didn't need to be. You know, that was actually a really funny bit, I think, in the last book with the Nilfgaardian sorceress. Nilfgaardians are supposed to be modest, and they use a lot of that famous black heraldry in their clothing. I always thought this was something of, like, a false modesty, and their clothes were still elegant and expensive, with more subtle patterns of embroidery and lace. But here, a Nilfgaardian wears a simple black robe with simple black conical hat, like a stereotypical witch. And then she begins in the hologram to pet an unseen but presumed to be black cat, and the northern sorceresses barely contain themselves from cracking up. 
It's funny in the books, but so terribly sad now that everyone in the show already dresses like that. But it does show the differences between Nilfgaardian and Northern Mages. Oh wait, forget about that. You see, in the books there was this huge difference. In many cases, the mages nearly or completely co-ruled the kingdoms of the north with the kings they served, but in Nilfgaard they were under constant scrutiny and servants of the state. Not anymore, Fringil of Vigo was in the same magic class as a BFF Yennefer, and the court sorcerer of Nilfgaard serves by appointment of a northern college thousands of miles away from the capital. Nilfgaard in the books was purposely not an evil empire, just a large empire with different cultures and ideals. Nope, now they're a little evil horde pulling the entrails out of Nordlings for fun. Hey Kalanth, are you sure that the pillaging isn't just the normal course of conduct for the warfare endemic to this historical epoch? Here's a place called Dol Blathana, literally the Valley of Flowers. Uh, you mean Billings, Montana? Whatever, places that have ironic names. People call Palestine the land of milk and honey. Geralt gets captured by two elves in a Seven in a story that lacks any of the comedy and depth of the book. He then tells the Adernian Viet Cong that they shouldn't do armed resistance because it confirms the human prejudice about elves. Geralt has some great theories about racial justice as you can tell and is somehow convincing to these full-time guerrillas. Also, the Princess of Sintra can't recognize an elf either innately or from very obvious context clues. Some people say that the first episode is the weakest, but this series rapidly improves after episode 2. These people are called liars because that's where they butcher the story about the Striga, one of the most beloved stories in the franchise. Apart from the monster being called the Striga and it affecting Foltest's daughter, the story has otherwise completely changed for the worse. They turned Foltest, who is described as slim and pretty and under 40, and who's reasonable and fair but with subtle and beautiful feelings of guilt and regret into his old fat fart who seems to be Robert Baratheon meets the Red Baron. I'm sure some people are going to say they prefer this version with a stupid procedural involving Triss, but please don't be that stupid and please don't watch this train wreck.